it's working now. So YouTube has changed things again, and so is the streaming software to keep up with the changes at YouTube, so... Wow. So anyways, let's go. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results, but it's always a good idea to stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hi, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being here. TradersWay is a sponsor of the Forex.today YouTube channel, bringing you these daily educational webinars into your life. Please pay it back by showing your loyalty and respect. Visit tradersway.com, open up a demo account. If you do so, you can download MT4, test out the execution speed, check out the swaps, check out the spreads, all that kind of stuff. Also, if you want to download my chart templates, uh, you can, the description, or the, the link is in the description below the video, cost you five bucks. Good to see you everyone. So yeah, I got to figure out what's changed. Lots of things have changed. So YouTube changed a bunch of things. I couldn't even find out a stream. That's that's how it was. And then once that happened, there's like, oh, there's an update to this broadcasting software. So anyways. Mr. Highville, probably not. Uh, Barry, the uh, video when I'm full screen seems to lag a little bit. I don't think this is lagging. Mm, maybe one second. So anyways, cool. So it's broadcasting well. It says excellent connection. So um, cool. So anyways, good morning, everybody. We're in a funky week. And that is because uh, there is a holiday in the United States of America. A lot of Americans take more than just the holidays off because, it, you know, if you have a, a scum-sucking job, um, then, you know, you get a few days for free. And then if you tax some, you know, take a vacation day just before and just after for two days of uh, vacation uh, that your boss so generously gives you, you know, you get five or six or whatever. So uh, pay attention to that. This might be a odd week. That being said, uh, you know, we're just s sitting here over the weekend. Nothing's happened except I've collected uh, my swap, which is really nice. What else? South Africa downgraded. So anyways, congratulations, uh, uh, South Africa. It's been downgraded so much now that I think it's the right. It's like, what is it? It's just purely negative now. Like, it's not even like, oh, this is risky. It's negative. So um, we'll see if that in, in impacts the RAND. Turkey's testing missiles today. Great. If they shoot them at somebody, it's going to be a problem. Diana says on eBay, someone's selling my book for five bucks. You should buy it. It's not my book. It belongs to Wiley Publishing. Okay. So anyway, so let's take a look. We'll go around the world today. We'll do all the normal stuff. Okay. Let's start with WTI. 
So we did that big discussion a week or two ago about uh, regression. And it came to the bottom of the regression channel and now has popped up to the top end of the uh, channel. But remember, ultimately, this was the target, right? How many people can confer that we were talking $58.50? But we were talking like the beginning of the month, really. There's a small chance it can go higher. I don't know if we can believe that this late in the game. If there's one more hurrah. Thank you, Barry. If there's one more hurrah, it's way up here to 60 bucks. But uh, what we were looking at last week, it seemed unbelievable at the time. But, uh, you know, what we're doing is we keep overlapping the weekly target with the monthly target. Okay. And this is what it's been doing. So now the weekly target's way up there. So for that to occur, we really should keep it above the, um, uh, the weekly central pivot. But if you walked right here and you said, uh, Thanksgiving week, thank you very much. I'm out at the monthly M4. Absolutely 100% valid. Okay. Okay. Absolutely valid. Taking risk off makes tons of sense here. Okay. So once again, don't trade this week like it's a normal week. It's not a normal week. Okay. So if you got that... Uh, you're swinging for home runs. Uh, I'll congratulate it. You, I'll congratulate you on that. But uh, that's pretty aggressive. Maybe too aggressive, right? Good morning, Daniel. So anyways, that's all you could really hope for. But that's positive for global macro. Okay. Um, what else could we do here? Oh, thank you, Diana. It's also been uh, written at um, Amazon.com that it is the worst book ever ever written and other people have said it's exactly like every other book written and one person says it's so bad it's dangerous I'm like no 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 dangerous is my middle name so anyways if you thought it was good i i invite you to leave a public comment on amazon.com maybe it's not the worst book ever written Leo wants to know about the U.S.-China deal and the effect on the U.S. dollar. Yes, if they do the deal, the dollar will weaken. Luis says, Wayne, is this true? Last week of November. I've never said last week of November. No. And the first two weeks of December, the stock market could make a correction. Well, it could is not a definitive question, right? So, of course it could. Right? So we got to tweak we got to tweak what you're asking. Wayne. Uh, well, let me just rephrase the whole dang thing. I've been telling you for about 9 months that in the third week, not the last week, beginning the third week of December or sorry, November, which I had been describing as Thanksgiving. So that's this week. Okay. During this Thanksgiving week, I tend to look for plausible corrections, if you want to call it that. I call it profit-taking. So we're not... Correct me. Uh, Tom says, why week? Because it's good. OK. 
Okay. Good news creates a weak dollar. Cool. If you don't get that, we it's a much longer conversation. Okay. Which I have covered, I'm guessing about 10 times in the last two months in the daily videos. Why it what first of all, I've covered at least 10 times over the last two months that if or when China in the United States do a deal, um, how that would impact the economy and then its impact on on the dollar. And then I use, um, I don't know about math, but I use what, charts and graphs and stuff to, to, sh to explain. Oh, I know what I did. I used behavioral finance to explain why the dollar weakens. So it's in it's in all those videos you should uh, you should watch them. I don't think we'll cover them today I'll probably cover it again in, in the near future but uh, when when they finally actually do a deal <clears throat> okay so anyways going back to the other question I've been saying for about nine months that I that I start to look for on the Thanksgiving holiday week profit taking and it, when stock markets are at an all-time high, profit-taking means the stock market will come down. So the second part of what I've been explaining for nine months is that in that period, I will look to uh, exit my current positions and not just exit, but reverse a pure a pure uh, PSAR, right? A parabolic stop and reverse. So not just long yen pairs, now short all yen pairs. Not for the long, long term, but for the medium term. Okay? And what I've been saying is I will do that somewhere between the third week of November and the day after the Fed meeting which is December 12th. So as you know, December 11th is the Fed meeting. So basically, between today and the Fed meeting, there's an extremely high chance, nearly 100% chance, that I will dump everything and um, trade that medium-term um, seasonality move. I consider it seasonality. Okay. So, Luis, you're asking that, but uh, I'm, I'm tightening up the question a little bit. Okay. Oh, baby G, no one's going to trade Friday except people that don't live in the United States, which is going to be a problem. The, the liquidity of the market on Friday is going to be nearly zero. So what does this mean to you guys? You're like, I'm in South Africa. Why should I give two hoots about some stupid Thanksgiving holiday in the United States. Well, your technical analysis relies on the self-fulfilling prophecy idea. Technical analysis works because everyone's using technical analysis. So when market participants are significantly less, statistically less, statistically important, right? Less then your technical analysis is less likely to work. To say it in a different way, no professional will be trading because they're spending time on their private island. So it'll be, right, it'll be a market full of amateurs that don't even realize the banks are closed. And they're just like, hey, Forex is a video game. Let's, let's play, you know, shall we play a game, right? So what will happen is a bunch of <clears throat> amateurs will get together and lose money as a cohort. As a giant community of amateurs, they will all lose money together. The professionals, well, first of all, they made their trade. So, like, let me, uh, let me put it this way. Do you think that we hit the monthly target right there on the last hour of the last real trading week of November. Do you think that's a coincidence? Like, like that, that just happened the, the hour before the markets close, before all professionals go on holidays, right? 
Look at the entry. It's a perfect entry and it's a perfect exit. The bottom and the top in the exact hour of opening and the exact hour of closing. So this tells you like the big boys are done. They made their money. They're already spending it. They're gassing up the Rolls Royce and they're heading out to the marina. And they're going to spend the week yachting. Okay. Steven says three week, three day week, but like, look, if you're, if you got FU money, you don't care about holidays and three day weeks and stuff. You're, what I'm telling you is you did your whole month. You can, you can take the rest of the year off, quite frankly, but what's going to happen is the year is done. And now we got to clean up and mop up some mess um, before the end of the year. So it's more like house cleaning. What happens in early December? It's just house cleaning. I mean, look, you've hit your target. You've hit your commission. You hit your goals by now. You know, it's the end of November. Like, you shouldn't be sweating bullets. Like, am I going to get my year-end bonus, you know, you know, if December's not good? Dude, you suck as a trader if you're sweating bullets in December, wondering if you're going to make your year-end bonus. Even if you make your year-end bonus, your bosses are sitting around thinking, we need to fire this guy, <laughs> right? Because they also know if you haven't hit your year-end bonus, you're incentivized to start gambling in December, right? And they're like, oh, this guy, this guy is trouble, right? So anyways, the professionals, they're done for the year right uh, as of Friday. So they're going to take this week off and they're just going to cruise around in their yacht drinking champagne. You've seen all the videos, right? The girls in the bikinis and models, bottles. Look, I'm a Forex trader, right? Boom. Right? And they're posting it on YouTube because they're ballers. Yeah. Gangsta. And then they'll come back to the office and they're like, okay, what do we need to like bail on by the end of the year? How do you want to do the tax treatment? Let's start, let's start on our taxes. Let's start writing the year end uh, newsletter. And it's, you know, like, we're, 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 they're wrapping it up is what I'm saying, right? So don't lose a lot of money this week. Okay. So Stephen, I'm not saying no, don't trade till the end of 2020. What I'm saying, or to don't, I'm not saying you can't trade between now and the end of the year, of course. But what I'm saying is the big moves are done. And I'm also challenging you to think about the market differently than just logging in. You're like, where's the trade today? Where's the trade today? Right? Boop, 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 boop. Today is just like yesterday, like tomorrow. No, no. There's differences throughout the season and throughout the month, right? Tr trends come and trends go and you can plan on these, right? And that look, seriously, like we're, we're wrapping up the year here and attitudes toward risk change. Right? So you could trade, but just don't think like this is the same as October. And October is not the same as August. And August and April are different. So, right? So newer traders log in and they're like, today is the, every day is the same. And they trade the same currency pair. Look at me. I trade Euro dollar every day on a 15 minute chart. I'm like, wow, what a disaster. Right? So I'm just challenging you to think differently, like that there's, there's more at play than that. And the, this is a business for most people in this market. They're either like fund managers or wealth managers, right? Or they're CFOs or they're banks. Okay. What percentage of bankers in the United States are going to take Thanksgiving holidays? What percentage? Not I, a bankers. I bankers are different. <laughs> they don't get holidays. Okay. What percentage of chief financial officers of Fortune 500 companies are going to take Thanksgiving off?
And with that being said, with ba- with companies, finance departments closed, banks, finance company uh, departments closed. What percentage of hedge hedge funds are seriously like going to make some big trades between now and the end of the year? So you have to understand real managers, like the ones that have been around for 30 years, they don't gamble. They make free money. There's a big difference. Think of it this way. Let's say you run a multi-billion dollar fund and you have over 100 employees. Do you gamble the money? No, of course not. So... You're not desperate going into December looking for a big move. That's just not how it works. Okay. And by the way, the majority of hedge funds suck as well. So there's room for you to come in, right? It's something like 70% of all hedge funds have less than 250 million, which means the real hedge funds laugh. They're like 250 million. It's nothing. That's their annual pay, right? So most hedge funds are small and they're not very good. So there's room for you to come into this market, guys. But you got you can't trade like a desperate trader stuck in poverty trying to use the market to get out of poverty. That That will never attract wealth. So I've told you many times and I'll say it one more time. Right, the secrets to forex is how long you could trade because you're you know how to trade plan, so you'll always have the odds on your side, right? So now, if you always have the odds on your side, you'll lose from time to time, but you'll win most of the time. So it's just the more time you add, the more your wins will grow. So the other thing that matters is assets under management, and if you don't have any money, gambling your way out of poverty just keeps you in poverty because that that's who gambles. Hedge fund managers don't gamble. There's a difference, right? So the way out then is, right, years and years and years of trading properly, right? And then you show that track record to somebody with money and they bankroll you, right? That's how you get, right? Under If you're undercapitalized now, that is the best way, right, is do your job. Manage other people's money. And they're like, oh, here's some money and there's some money. And then you trade that for a year or two. And there and that's going really well. And then more people give you money. And all of a sudden you're capitalized and you're doing your job. And it's the same job you did in your first two or three years. But now in your second two or three years, right? So now we're in the sixth year. You're doing the same thing. But now you just have more assets under management. And you collect a... a a a management fee and you collect a performance fee and your clients are happy and you're happy and more money comes in and you just do this for the rest of your life and you're just absolutely fine. Okay. No one will invest into a gambler, right? Let me say that again. No one will invest into a gambler. So make sure you're not gambling. Okay. Make sure you're not gambling. That's right, Stephen. Go back to the video I did on FX Street like three years ago. The one where I'm in the Caribbean in a three-piece suit and a volcano behind me. And I just line it up. This is what I've been doing. This is what I'm about to do. This is what's going to happen. And then this other thing's going to happen. And then this third thing's going to happen. And then this fourth thing's going to happen. And I'm already prepared to do them all. And it started the same day I said it would happen. The entire market came down. I exited everything right? Made money on the way down. Then I said there was going to be a false rally and explained why. And then there was a false rally. In fact, it went rallied all the way up, made a top and then then came crashing back down. Cool. Nice. You're welcome. Oh, you just saw that one over the weekend? Cool. Well, that's what's go- what I'm planning for now. So is that going to happen again this year? I don't know. How the heck would I know? But I have a plan. Do you understand? I have a plan, so I am preparing to execute my my strategy, 
that's all the plan is. And if it goes my way, I'll, I'll, I'll be ready, willing, and able, RWA. And if it doesn't happen quite that way, well, I'll, I'll do all right, right? I'll do all right. And if it does go my way, I'll do a lot better. That's all. But there's a plan and a strategy, right? So anyways, I don't know what's going to happen this week, but I can tell you with the holidays, it seems to me most of the market participants are going to be on holiday. Therefore, we will have less volume and volatility, which means technical analysis may fail us. And that's all of that sounds like risk. So between now and the end of the year, trade like there's a little extra risk in the market. Now, does that mean run away? No. Okay, because again, if we're going to talk, uh, you know, if we're going to talk about you being a professional, your job is to be here for your clients and manage them through this risk. So it's better to say, well, I recognize the risk and therefore I'm making certain adjustments. Maybe you have a smaller lot size. Maybe you have more criterion for your entry, right? Remember uh, last week we are talking about, I don't believe there's a first mover advantage, right? So you're like, okay, I'm not taking first moves. I'm buying, uh, I'm buying second chances, right? That kind of stuff. But at least say, look, I recognize this and I will adjust. Now, make your best decision now and then and then remind and then analyze right over the course of the next 8 weeks the adjustments you make now did they give you the outcome you were looking for right yes or no and then in 20, November of 2020 what would you recommend to yourself as far as your risk management techniques okay so you, you practice something this week, measure, then measure it, right? Then adjust and make some recommendations to you in the future. So now we're talking around maybe January or February. Say, okay, how did November and December go uh, according to your risk management? Did it work? Did it not work? What would you do? And then write that down and then leave yourself notes. So then in November 2020, you open up your notes and it says, okay, Last year, I did this, this, and this to manage my the additional risk that I, I, that I identified in the market. And this kind of worked well, and this kind of didn't work well. And my recommendations to myself now is to try this small little change in strategy, make that change, and then measure that over November and December and January of 2020, 2021. And then analyze that, what worked well, what didn't work well, what adjustments would you make, and, and then always learn. But see, the, the idea here is that you're measuring, right? You're measuring. It's like a business plan, if you will. It's a tactical plan. It's, a ta it's scientific methodology, making a hypothesis in which how you should address this, this undue risk that's now part of your market, right? And then use scientific methodology to, to measure, right? And then capture the results so you can try a different experiment in next year, okay? But this is what you need to be doing. Okay? You saw a video of me, uh, young Wayne McDonald, explaining swaps? Yeah, cool. So anyways, uh, I, I'm trying to get you to think big. I want you to be big. Okay? I want you to be big, guys. Okay, cool. All right, so up is still good for me. Um, but this, this, once again, down is now sort of what I'm keeping my mind up. up uh, anyways my mind open for. So again, Kiwi Swiss franc, this is an upward trajectory. And this is also part of my macro plan that I created for you guys back in February of 2019. 
Okay, and we are walking the steps here. And right around here, I'm planning not only to stop buying, but between now and January 1st, I'm going to start dumping it. Now, this is a major benefit for you being in my swing trading group because we're going to make these decisions together. Andrew says, search Wayne McDonald interview on YouTube. Yeah. Well, it's tricky because I think I have 5,000 videos now associated with my work on YouTube. 5,000. I taught your last guru how to trade. Yeah, I think we're go just going to meet for milk and cookies, right, Ron? Just have sort of an office party. Wayne, how can you get COT data? Seriously, Tom? Go to Forex.today. Come on, Tommy. You're on the Forex.today YouTube channel? <laughs> like, yeah, go to Forex.today. And click on the thing, which I think, what is it called? COT data. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. Here you go, Tommy boy. You ask, I deliver. All right. So cool. Boop. No problem. Hey, TBM. All right. Here's another baggie. This is a doozy, huh? Isn't it amazing that we've been moving sideways since the beginning of, or sorry, the middle of October? More than a month we've been stuck in that range. Isn't that amazing? Can we use the COT data? I mean, is it always anal anal analyzable? Yeah, absolutely, man. In fact, the version on Forex.today is the easiest to use that I've ever seen. I used to just download, right? I used to just download the spreadsheet from the CFTC. And it was just a spreadsheet. And tabs and tabs and tabs of data. Um, so this, right? is pre-sorted and pre-filtered for you. So you're just looking at smart money info, right? And you can see the price of the currency. You can see um, uh, bulls and bears and of course the net. So I've never seen a better one, but there you go. Pro Trader, they're five bucks. It's not monthly. You can tell because when you, on the order form, it says, this is not a monthly recurring. <laughs> this is a flat one-time fee. Yeah. Yeah, you got it, man. I charge the five bucks because there's so many people that just waste time. And for five bucks, I tell them to go away. And it's a great filter, five bucks. All right, uh, uh, um, CAD Yen, here's another one. So really what I'm looking for, guys, is change, uh, a signs for change in direction, right? So right now, everything seems to be okay. I think these are weekly, right? So right now this is bearish, as you can see, pretty obvious. So bears would be selling here like they sold here, like they sold here, and like they sold here. 
and like they tried to sell here. I don't know if they survived that. So all of this is bearish point of view. Okay. Right. So they sold here. They sold here. They sold here. They sold here. And do you think they're going to sell here? No, I have not TBM. What do you think, guys? It's a rad life for us. It's a rad life for us. Right, rad life? What do you think, guys? Are there bears here? Cool. So I know you got that planned out then, right? Yeah. And if you fail, you could either blame Thanksgiving, and if that doesn't work, just blame the Russians. Gold! Let's do gold. Gold. Hey. Looks like we hit our resistance and it came down. Shocking. Okay. Check this out. Where, pray tell, is the sell zone? Right there, baby. And the target is way down below, but we're held up by a monthly. How to do gold. Well, you can't do anything now. You've already missed it by a lot. You should have done this really on Friday. It's a Friday front run. If you're my swing trading group, you would have caught this as a Friday front run uh, because we would have done this on Thursday. Um, more likely you were a bull than a bear. So uh, if you're a bull, the only thing you can do now is look for this. Okay. Oh, you caught it, Barry? Right on. Okay. So uh, bulls are going to try to take it the other way, but you're, you know, so you got to play it this way and look for some sort of reversal. But remind yourself that you're asking a lot on a holiday week. You're asking for a lot in a holiday week. But anyways, it's your plan. It's your money. So you have to ask yourself, now does it look bullish? No. So you need the market to do this. And even on a 15-minute chart, that's going to take, what, eight hours? So that means Shanghai Open. If it's 12 plus hours, then you're talking about uh, London Open tomorrow. And then you say to me, but wait, I have to trade it now. I have to make a trade. I got to make a trade. I have a fear of missing out, Wayne. Then by all means, jump in early. Hope it works out. Okay. 1509. Yeah, so you basically have uh, 50 bucks on it. Cool. So let's take a look at that. All right, so 1509. Okay, so you're you're a little late, but you're in there, all right. Okay. And how come you're still in it? 
Let's clean this up. Why are you still in it? If that if you're short at fifteen oh nine. So the obvious trade plan here is there's a sell and here's the target. Okay. So you should have been out to, uh, on the 12th. Um, the next target, okay, the next target is down here, okay, okay, but see, I would, here's how I would rather see you trade, okay, I would rather see you exit here and enter a new one. And this is a monthly front run. So this would actually be a new trade just below 75. And your December target is down here. So you're going for 14. So I'd, so let's clean this up. So your November trade is to sell here, exit here. Your December trade is sell here, exit here. That's what, how I'd rather have you do it, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a swing trade, right? So this is a basic swing trade, okay? But um, there should have been an exit here, okay? Especially if you're hitting it in the first 10 days, uh, you were you were vulnerable to a counter trend and potential reversal. So like the trade is fine. That's a basic swing trade, right? It's nothing exciting about it. It's just a good trade. That's fine, right? Nice, nice little trade. But the the risk management was poor. Cord, cord. It's planning. Okay. Her entry was fine. It's not even good. It's just fine. Like that's what you're supposed to be doing every day. Right. Hope. Right. She's got this. That's a great trade. But standard planning cord also includes exit. We don't leave that up to chance. If you're hitting the pivot profit zone on the 10th day of the month, you must expect the counter trend trade. Right. Hope strong enough to, to ha like I'm not even giving negative feedback. I'm giving constructive criticism. No. All right. Cord, I 100 percent, maybe even a thousand percent disagree with you. Trailing stops are stupid. That means you, you have no plan for your exit and you're leaving that up to chance as well. I can tell you that there's a massive potential for a counter trend trade in this situation. Leaving a trailing stop is just, you're not doing your job. It's stupid. It's just not right. Okay. So what you should do is the technical analysis cord. Okay. Her trade was great. That's a great swing trade. We do it Week after week, month after month, it's all, it's great. I mean, that, that's good. She did her job. That was good. Now, in this situation, being the 10th or 11th, there is likely a counter trend trade. Very likely. And being stuck here made her very vulnerable. Very vulnerable to a reversal. That's one reason why we got that big move here. This is huge for bulls which means she would have given up the vast majority of her profit. 
Okay? So never, ever, ever, ever use trailing stops. Do your job and do the technical analysis. Okay? Now, Cord, if she had hit the target on, let's say, the 20th instead of the 10th, there would be a different scenario. Okay? Okay. So there's a difference between the 10th and 20th. Okay. If she hits this price here and she's still in from this trade, there's a lot of there's a lot of luck that she survived this, okay? Even though in that scenario I still recommend you she takes profit here. Okay? but it's not good risk management, okay? Her entry was great. I hope she does it a thousand more times, okay? This was unacceptable risk to leave that open, and, right, and now if she gets here, she got lucky on the, on the R2, but there's still rules of engagement that are important to follow. Cord, you're missing like giant gaps in technical analysis. You must f follow the rules of engagement of technical analysis. Okay. So technical analysis tells her that there's high risk here for a reversal. Okay. All right. Cool, Cord. We 100% disagree with each other. That's cool. Let's leave it be now. Do not bring it up again, okay, Cord? I don't need the distraction, so let me teach my class, okay? So, what I, if she had taken profit here, she would have been able to not be exposed to this risk, okay? And maybe this pullback last week, maybe this pullback last week allowed her to get back in, but now this is a different trade plan. And this is a front run based on this move here. So really it's the same as this move. In fact, you know, she would have sold this and then would have got that. But either way, if she's short here, it's the same as being short here. And that, that trade will allow her to go down to 14, okay? And you're like, well, now that's confusing a little bit, right? Because I said, well, if she should get out here, if she's at that point, only if she's here. Okay, because the rules of engagement over the long run, over years and decades, are going to save you from disaster. So under the rules of engagement, if you sold here, that's your plan. Okay, then you only have two choices for targets, this M1 which is the conservative, and this S2, which is the aggressive target, okay? However, this top being at M3 does not tell you R2. It does not tell you R2, okay? That does not tell, or sorry, S2, I had it backwards, sorry, S2. It, this entry, statistically speaking, does not predict S2. It does not say 1436. It should be understood that this is just technical analysis. It's not an opinion. And yeah, of course this can go to 14, but that's not what technical analysis is. So technical analysis helps you identify levels of risk, okay? So she made a great trade. It's a standard swing trade. She'll do it a thousand more times. But the next time she does it, I would rather her take profit here because that's predictable m3 to m1 is what i put in my book that is predictable hitting m1 on the 10th also in many 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 cases produces a counter trend trade 
So for her to go for R2 or below, go for 1401, being at 1509, actually doesn't make any technical sense. I understand maybe it'll do it, but there are other levels that need to be added to the trade over time. So I'd rather her make this 50 bucks and then enter again here, oops, enter again here to catch this 50 bucks. It's the same 100 bucks, but this spot, let's, let's do it this way. This area here in yellow is extremely high risk for her trade. And like trailing stops, that's not risk management, that's hope. Okay. Cool. So it is a good trade hope, right? Okay. It's a good trade. It's a swing trade. So make sure you understand that too. Like you got that down. That's a swing trade. What are the rules engagement for swing trades? Where are the vulnerabilities for counter trend trades? What, what, what are the critical aspects that lead to counter trend trades, all that kind of stuff, right? Just follow the rules of engagement. Over the course of a thousand trades, Hope, these rules of engagement will average everything out, okay? And what by that I mean is sometimes this may go further. So let's say you exit here. How do you feel if it does this and this and this? Well, my experience of being at my desk for 15 years doing this on a daily basis, that doesn't happen very often. Like, it's rare. It can and does happen, but it's very rare. And more often than not, it does something like, uh, let's do this in a slightly different color, uh, green, uh, blue, uh, greenish. Okay, more often than not, it does something like this. Now, sometimes it does this, and then back down. Sometimes it does this and goes up. I don't really know. But what I'm saying is, if 100% of the time over the course of the next 10 years of you doing this, okay, sometimes it'll do this. More often than not, it'll do this and this and this. If you just get out, right? If you just get out where I'm recommending, Over the course of doing this 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, it'll all average out. But the thing is, which means you won't make any more or any less pips, but the thing is you're not exposed to all this time and all this risk. And I, I know for, from doing this the, the hard way that that stress really starts to get at you physically right? Physically, this is very, very stressful. And if I could say, well, let's say 20% of the time it falls, 80% of the time it doesn't fall, but when it does fall, it far, falls a lot further. And when it pulls back, it's usually just a, a, a retracement over a week or so like this. But there are many, many, many other benefits for being out of the market and the money already in your pocket. One of them is stress. I can't under emphasize how important that one is because I've been there. I've, I've had holes in my stomach, right? Um, it's just, it's gut wrenching, but the, here's the even more important part. You're stuck in that trade, sweating bullets over wh whether this will fall further or not exposed to risk of it actually counter trending for a while, giving up your hard earned pips. But the thing is when you're staring at a trade, you're missing three or four other good ones where this one was mediocre. See, like your, this trade here did nothing from, from what, November 11th to November 21st. It did nothing for 10 days. If you had already put the money in your pocket, you could have been on three or four or five other good trades making money. And then you swing back to this one. You're like, ooh, I'm going to front run this one. And then you get back into that one. But instead of just getting stalled, like no one wants to get stalled in a trade that hasn't done anything for 10 days, 10 trading days, right? That's a lot of time. So I think what this shows is you have proficiency in entering a good swing trade. Let's just work on the risk management. And now you got two sides of a really awesome coin. 
Currency traders, what ha what's so special about the 10th of the month? It's not the 10th that matters. It's that it's early in the month. So again, this is just stuff out of the swing trading course, right? All swing traders know when like there's massive profit taking, for example. And this is part of that understanding. Okay. Cord says stall for being like, because, oh, so, so because it's $20, you don't care? Huh. No, well, once again, I, I just want people, I'm trying to teach people how to conduct and trade technical analysis. Outside of that, I don't care. So like you don't, it doesn't matter to you because it's only 20 bucks. I, I don't even agree with your thought process. Okay. Okay, I, that's all. Yeah, even the, your idea of putting your stop at plus 10. I don't even agree with that, Cord. But anyways, that I would hate to have a plus 10 on my record. That'd be terrible. Yeah, you got it, Mr. Eyebolt. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on. Da, 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 oh, I want to do Rand because South Africa got downgraded again. Yeah. Oh, red right on hope. Yeah. Right on. All right. Uh, Rand. So Rand got slapped so now what yeah now what i'm worried about a front run okay you see this i'm worried about a, this is a december front run so my risk now has gone up significantly on this trade and i should probably manage it right Oh, Tom wants to do COT. I'm okay with that. Uh, all right, so guys, uh, here's what I need to do for me. Um, let's delete this. Um, I'm probably going to have to exit this trade in here. Okay. I'm probably going to have to exit this trade in here. I probably should have done it earlier uh, in the week. So I already, I've already t told myself... Uh, that this is a week where I can exit and and not feel any shame. And so this is leading right up to that where we're stalled out on support. We're stuck on neck on a December front run and ran just got downgraded. So uh, if we breach this four hour 21, uh, I'm taking my money off. And so the last trade I did is here. So I'm going to I'm going to exit. Just so you know, okay. When I sold it here, my target was here, and we didn't quite get that. And then again, here's the uh, here's the front run. So if I was a bull now, I'd be looking for this, okay. That's why I got right. My Alamo is basically this area in here, off that twenty one, so. So look for that coming off. All right. Uh, oh, COT. Sure, let's do COT. How many people here are, are new to the Commitment of Traders report? <clears throat> I first started looking at it in... 2003, maybe 2004. Uh, no. 
C F T C. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it was easier just to go back. CFTC, Commitment of Traders. All right, this is a government agency. And this government agency, one of the, the duties it, it's been given is to track orders, commodity orders, sitting on the exchange. Okay. Uh, futures only, futures and options. All right. I think this is it. So you can download this. <laughs> Very helpful, right? All right, you can download this. And I don't want to import it into Excel. All right. Anyways, so you can download download this into your Excel. And as you can probably imagine, it's this crazy Excel spreadsheet full of numbers. Okay. So what would be more helpful is if we had a graphical representation of what is on that spreadsheet. Okay. The CFTC looks at the market. In fact, they're required, they, they require traders to report their positions. And they did this because after World War II, when the government was buying everything, um, there were sort of inefficiencies in the market where like if the US mar if the US government needed corn to make fuel as well as food, all of a sudden every farmer in America would plant corn. Well, there's a problem with that. First of all, there's not enough wheat, so wheat prices would go through the roof. Corn prices would become worthless, and there'd be these strange imbalances. So after World War II, the government said, okay, well, we need to make sure we, we, we are told in advance that there are imbalances. And, and really, what would be better is if just the market knew there were imbalances so that it could correct itself. And if it couldn't, then the government could correct itself, right? So they came with... A, came up with this ingenious idea. They realized the first major player in the futures market are hedgers. This is a company like uh, a company that makes breakfast cereal. Clearly they, they need corn and they need wheat and they need sugar. And they are buyers of these commodities. They will buy the wheat and the corn and the sugar. And they're worried about prices going up. So what they'll do is they'll hedge in the futures market that the exposure to risk, okay? Meaning if prices go up, they'll have long futures contracts so that if futures prices go up, they'll make money in the futures market, which they can then take and then spend on buying the actual physical commodity in the cash market. And therefore, the, the loss in, in the prices going up on one is offset by the amount of money you've profited in the futures market, okay? And so you're locking in a current price, right? Well, the government said, okay, we can start with these players. We know they're in the market. And we also know they're not intending to profit from this. They're just trying to lock in prices. In fact, it's the whole reason to have a futures market. Okay, so they say, okay, bona fide hedgers, register as bona fide hedging, as bona fide hedgers, 
and you will not have to pay taxes on your profits and your losses. So, wow, like, whoa, really? So if you're truly a market participant that is just hedging using futures contracts, the upside is you can register and not have to pay taxes. Holy smokes. So 100% of those guys immediately register as bona fide hedgers. Cool. So now you can see their volume when they trade every Thursday. Is it Thursday? I think so, right? No. Well, anyways, once a week. I forget what day. Once a week, they, they show their positions to the government. All right, here's all the trades we've made. Remember, we don't have to pay taxes, right? So they tell the government, this is what we did. Okay. Now, the second part of this rule, the, or the, what the CFTC does, is they say, all right, we need to know about the, the participants that are in the market. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, guys. Every Tuesday, because Monday's holidays and stuff, so every Tuesday, the report, every Friday, this information is delivered. Thank you. All right, so... They say, we also know that there are market participants that are using futures to actually make a profit. Let's call them hedge fund managers. So they say, well, how do we capture these guys? And they come up with a rule. For any market participant that has a large position, and there's a definition to this, like 100 contracts or something, which is... Not that much if you're a big player. I mean, even if you're a small player, it's not that big. So what it does is it captures a huge percentage of the market. If you have more than 100 contracts, you must report. So now that gets reported to the government once a week. So now you got bona fide hedgers and bona fide speculators. And that represents probably 95% of all volume. Now, how do we know that? Well, futures contracts are traded over in an exchange. So the exchange, they have three pieces of inf information now. One, total volume minus all speculative volume minus all hedging volume gives you what? What's left over? Who's number four? Dumb money. That's you. That's me. Dumb money. We're not bona fide hedgers. We're not big enough to be a speculator or, or you know, a, a large institutional speculator, right? So we're not institutional. We're not a hedger. It's just all the crap left over. It's us. We're dumb money. Woohoo! But that's how they figure it out. Isn't it cool? So now you can plot open orders for speculators, open orders for hedgers, and open orders for dumb money. You can plot all of this. And this is week over week over week. You can, you can plot the changes in positions. Are, are hedgers hedging more or are hedgers hedging less? Are speculators buying more or are they selling more? Or are they buying less or are they selling less? Are they Buying less and selling more, or are they buy, uh, buying less and selling less? See, like, there's a lot of different pieces of information here. But this is hard to look at on a spreadsheet. So, I present to you Forex.today. What? Here it comes, Tommy. COT report. Here comes the drums. Yeah, boy. What? Yeah. Here we go, yo. This is your commitment to traders report. Nice, right? Okay. 
Let's break this down. Otherwise, let me, right? Let me explain. This is Euro. Okay? Let's try to make the color the same. Okay. Euro buyers. See? Buyers. Long, non-commercial positions. Ma, 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 ma. This line is the number of open positions that are long. These are buyers. Week over week over week over week. So we're interested in the last few weeks. Huh. Not a lot of change, huh? But those are just open orders to buy. Okay. Let's now look at this one. Short positions. Let's go back. This goes over a year. Cool. First thing you should know, there's more bears than bulls. Is this important? I don't know. What do you think? Let me identify another line here that you can't see, but this is a zero line. Cool. So this is numbers. There's like 150,000 long contracts and 200,000 short contracts. Cool. Now, this other gobbledygook price, but this thing here, that's the actual price of the euro dollar. That's just the euro dollar. Euro dollar. Okay. So that can that's really helpful, I think. Okay. So for example, let me show you something. Euro dollar went up. Those are buyers. The euro dollar went up. Were people buying euro? Euro dollar went up clearly. Hundreds of pips. Were people buying the euro? No. Bears during that period got out of their bearish positions. Ho ho ho! Wow, we we know this stuff. Now you know why the market is moving. Bears were taking profit. Now, you might say to yourself, these bears may want to return to the market and sell again in the future, right? Pachow. Wow. Cool, man. Cool. You can plan for this in advance. Now, let me show you one more. Let me clear my throat. Kick it over here, baby pop. Let all the fly skimmers feel the beat. Mm, drop. All right. Here we go. This black line. Simply represents. The difference between bulls and bears. Okay. Okay. And because we're below the zero line, we're negative. So there's more short contracts than there are long contracts. 
So we know right away this market is bearish because it's below the zero line. Okay, we know that. And then what you're looking at is this. Really, just look at the last three weeks. We're just looking at the change between the two. Okay, so this means over this period, more and more bears. It's becoming more and more bearish. What happened to price in that period? Well, let's take a look. Okay, more bears, euro dollar falls. Less bears, less bearish. Doesn't make the euro dollar bullish. Even though the euro dollar in that period might have been up three, four, five hundred pips, it hasn't turned bullish. Only if you're on a 15 minute chart. Well, Mark, let's put that together. This is an exchange sitting in Chicago. The Chicago Board of Trade. What currency does the Chicago Board of Trade base all its trading on? Because remember, this isn't cash euro, this is euro futures. So if you wanted to buy a euro future, what currency do you think the Chicago Board of Trade accepts? No, what currency? What tender? Dollar. Got it. There you go. That's it. You got it. This is the euro. Euro futures trading in, in America. So it's Americans hedging against changes in value of the euro. You see what I mean? Cool, right? How many people benefited from the last 10 minutes of conversation? If so, I'd like, I'd like you to like. And also, I'd, I'd like to ask you when, the, when this uh, video is done or today's webinar is done, that on the recording of the video, you document that you learned how to trade or use the Commitment of Traders report. Would you document that? Because maybe it'll help it become searchable. Okay. Now imagine I was doing this by going through spreadsheets 15 years ago. And now all you have to do is pull up this page and it's that easy and that clear. Prince Philip says, is this enough information to form a fundamental bias? Dude, it's just a tool. So once again, Euro dollar is going up, but nobody's buying it. That could be useful information if you're already a bearer on Euro. Because you're like, dude, this is going up, but there are no buyers. Do you understand like the weakness in that rally? Okay. Lucas or Luca, Lukix. My goal is to show you that there are things to learn and I hope you benefit from the daily webinars. Okay. If you need Detailed training, take out your credit card, go to fxbootcamp.com and buy the course. There's 20 courses, but I don't know how many courses. There's 
there's 40 hours of courses. Okay. So pay the money and start the detailed step by step education. I can't possibly cover everything in great deal here. Besides, I'm trying to teach you basics of technical analysis and stuff. So if it's a headache, cool. Um, I'm just trying to show you that these things are out there. These things are important. That was pretty educational. But yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, this is not a training course. This is me in the live market trying to teach you how to become a trader. So if you need the detailed education, right? So like, uh, yeah, whatever. Just, yes, take the course, man. Yeah, take the course. And I, I'm about to, don't, by the way, don't go take the course today. I'm about to send out that, um, that Black Friday deal that you guys asked for. So I'm going to mess around with that the next couple of days. So hopefully maybe by Wednesday, I can release it to you guys and give you a super awesome discount. Um, and I'm only doing it because you guys asked for it. So I've had to have a programmer get involved and all this kind of stuff because I want to roll out a new system, but the new system didn't have coupons. So then he's had to program that. And also uh, the new system is much more uh, mobile oriented. So you can watch everything on, uh, on your cell phone and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, okay. So anyway, so just hang on a couple extra days and we'll get that for you. Okay. The all bundles course. Oh yeah. You can change your currency here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just messing around with this page. Barry, what's Black Friday? Um, some big sale thing where people spend money. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone said pound. All right, let's do a quick pound. No, I did euros are so just carry it over. All right, so here's pig. Pig a little bearish, pig a little bullish, pig a little bullish, pig a little bullish, pig a little bullish, I suppose. Are they all four hours? No. Let's move this to one hour. And pig a little bullish. So I can tell you two things. Bullish, bullish, bullish. Bullish, bullish, not so bullish. British pound, generally strong. U.S. dollar, slightly stronger. Done. Okay. It's that easy, tac tac. Oh, no, you do it yourself. Do it yourself, guys. All right, so let's uh, let's pull the plug. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your hard work. Thought we had some pretty good discussions today. 
COT, and really risk management, right? Risk management not, not only involves where your stop is, but also where your exit is, okay? You either use hardcore technical analysis for your rules of engagement, or you're not trading properly, okay? So um, running stops are stupid. That There's no analysis to that. You're like, oh, I'll just trail my stops 30 pips and we'll see where it goes. That's nonsense. That's ridiculous. So you don't do trailing stops. And, we, and we have, when you take a trade, there are targets set. Just rules of engagement. Okay? That's all. Remember, we're trying to take luck out of this. Right? Do or do not, there is no try. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average.